and gentlemen, from San Francisco's 365 Club, please welcome Paula Poundstone. feel a little silly, aren't we? <laughs> you have to allow for a thing like that. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for coming. <laughs> it's very nice to be here. I, I, well, I, I used to live uh, in San Francisco. When I first moved here, it was foggy and rainy and cold for two months solid. First, I thought, terrific. It's sort of romantic, really. I'll break up an old chair for kindling, buy a bottle of wine, sit in front of the fire for the day. Two months later, a hopeless alcoholic with no furniture. <laughs> well, now you're supposed to keep like earthquake preparedness kits too. Do you do, you do that? Yeah. And me neither, I still share an apartment here. I'm not keeping canned goods in my apartment for an earthquake. If I get trapped beneath the beam for three days, I'm at least gonna lose weight. <laughs> I don't want them finding me miraculously at the end of a week being like, well, Chris, she's huge. <laughs> I was able to get to some beans, thank God. <laughs> I own that parking problem's coming right along, by the way. Unbelievable. One time I was working a nightclub here and I had to park like way far away and I'm walking to the club and I go by a garage door with one of those signs, don't even think about parking here. <laughs> like people aren't tense enough about the parking thing. Somebody's got to put some smart ass sign up on their door, don't even think about parking here. I'll tell you what, I stood right there and thought about it. <laughs> I did. I threw little pebbles up at the window to get their attention. I go, hey look, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Go ahead, call the cops, see if I care. I'll just say I was thinking about something else. I don't know what is it about, about cars. People love to tell you what to do with your car. You know what I mean? The other day, I was in a traffic jam. I was a mile back myself, and some guy pulls up behind me and leans on his horn. Like everyone else just forgot to move. I expected to see a headline in the paper the next day, aware citizen alerts many. <laughs> but like interviews with stupid people. <laughs> we were just sitting there. <laughs> when this gentleman pointed out we could simply press on the gas pedal <laughs> and proceed. <laughs> Thank God he was there. <laughs> My children had missed months of school. I never yell at other drivers, I pre probably because I'm not a good driver myself. And the other thing is, because I usually drive rental cars, and frankly, I can't figure out how to get the window down fast enough. <laughs> you know? Once you know, I might push the... There's nothing more embarrassing than you push the thing and the rear window goes down. <laughs> and then you have to get out and get into the back seat. <laughs> and then call them an idiot. <laughs> it kind of takes the heat right off, really. <laughs> One time I thought the window was down, and so I just whacked my head. <laughs> That actually does work. That frightened the other drivers. <laughs> They're like, honey, she's whacking her head. Come on, take this exit. <laughs> Sweetums, the head whacker's coming right up behind us. <laughs> she's whacking her own head. There's no telling what she'll do to us. Come on now. <laughs> when I lived here, I drove a 65 Mustang, my best friend, Dave. It was a great car, but it broke down all the time, you know? I figured someday it was gonna break down and I'd have a breakdown right afterwards. <laughs> They'd find me on the side of the road yelling at it like I was its parent. <laughs> saying, do you have any idea how much money I've put into you this month alone? <laughs> I give and give and give to you. <laughs> Could you maybe take me two, three more miles? Oh, no. <laughs> Look at all the other cars, they're moving. 
had to have break shoes, I buy them for you. You won't wear them. Uh, you know, I finally got to a point with this car where I just decided I don't care what else breaks. I'm not replacing another thing. I'm just gonna drive it till it stops running all together and then just leave it on the side of the road and probably be a much happier person. <laughs> the very night that I made this decision, I got out of the car, slammed the door and the back of the front seat just fell off. <laughs> I thought, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. I'll just drive without the back of the front seat. <laughs> the, as it turns out, the back of the front seat is a piece of driving equipment very easily taken for granted. <laughs> The following day, I started up a hill <laughs> and began to lose contact with both the brake and the gas pedal. I slid into the back seat where I simply made suggestions. <laughs> Could you make a left up here? Now I drive a Volkswagen Cabriolet, French. <laughs> It's a convertible rabbit, you know. Driving a convertible has kind of changed my eating habits when I drive. <laughs> you know, now I find a lot of times when I'm driving, you know, I used to eat those Hostess mini donut gems with a white powdered sugar on the outside. <laughs> now a lot of times I find I'm eating a ball donut with white junk on my face. <laughs> pulls you over and he puts his big old cup face in your window? What if you just touch his face? You're not really breaking any laws, are you? He's like, ma'am, do you have any idea how fast you're... Touch? Maybe there is some sort of face touch and ordinance of some sort. So what if you don't touch his face? It's kind, kind of close, that's all. Just what, I didn't even touch you. Oh, baby, baby, baby. I thought somebody just came out over there, did they? They moved? Was it a camera guy and he just came right into my area? Yeah. He's behind you. He's behind me right now? I feel so comfortable. Is he getting the butt shot right this second? Oh, thank God. My butt is so infrequently highlighted on television. And what a happy occasion this will be. I have a huge big butt and huge thighs. Which I know because my neighbors have complaints. I have a trampoline in my backyard, so whenever I'm home, I put on hell and ready, I am woman really loud and go out and jump. That's true. My neighbors think I'm really weird because they don't know that I have a trampoline. They just know they see me over the fence every few seconds. Look at this, how long has that been like that? What if we have to start this whole show over again because of that? People will behoove you to be a little bit more vigilant. I hate that something my hair involved in an unauthorized activity. I specifically had the hair of makeup woman make it so it wouldn't move. Because that's the way I look best if I have no hair movement. If my hair doesn't move at all, it makes the rest of me look so active in comparison. But thank you very much. This just in. Now, these are tarts from Joanne and Ginny. <laughs> Joanne, Ginny, thank you very much. And strawberry frosts are some of my very favorite kind. I really, uh, did you know that ahead of time? Incredible. <laughs> so you've been reading Tiger Beat? Because <laughs> you know the big spread they did on me. I mentioned my likes and dislikes. I, uh, I actually eat a box of Pop-Tart today. I'm not proud of that. It's a way that back to them, I think you see right here, look, they have the tart right on the cover with the cross section. 
So you can see all the rich, tasty goodness right there. Well, I'm only human for Christ's sakes. And look at this, you guys, inside, let me just show you. Inside there are three pouches of two. This is what happens to me, I open the first pouch and I eat one tart and I enjoy it very much, as naturally I would. And then I feel, well, I have to eat the second one or it will go stale. Well, now I've eaten two and it's no longer just a snack, it's a meal. I figure I may as well eat two more. And finally, I'm just like, well, hell, I don't just want two Pop-Tarts hanging out in a box. I eat the last two just to tidy up, really. I met some guy who told me he likes to eat the chocolate flavored chocolate frosted Pop-Tarts. He said he heats them up, breaks them up into a bowl, pours milk over them and eats them. I said, well then fuck it, you might as well cook. <laughs> if you're using more than three steps, you're cooking in my opinion. <laughs> what a hideous waste of energy. Now actually, um, yeah, those right there. Get that good swatting position if you could, please. It's very attractive. Is the butt camera still there? <laughs> that would have been a really good butt shot right there. I'll probably have my own special, just... <laughs> Paula Pounds, don't watch your butt. <laughs> I don't toast uh, Pop-Tarts at all anymore myself. I don't know if you can see that scar, but uh, Pop-Tart injury. <laughs> I know it was not from a toaster, and I hate it when people suggest that. What kind of an idiot would I be to be like, well, oh, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> it says it right in the name, it's Pop-Tart, not stick your hand in and get it, Tart. <laughs> it's more of a popping thing, really. <laughs> you know what it was? I was toasting them on the top rack of the oven. And you know that orange thing? <laughs> Do you know why that's orange? It's very, very hot, as it turns out. I'm kind of proud of this, so I protected that tart the entire way back down. Something I feel kind of good about. I'm very clumsy. I was nearly killed once by cinnamon. It's true. I was making some cinnamon toast, and I inadvertently inhaled some cinnamon. Don't do it. I sneezed so hard, I hit my head on the counter and fell to the ground. You know, great, I'm gonna be killed by cinnamon. What a lousy eulogy that would make. She loved spices. I wanna die, but I, I, I don't want a food death if I can possibly avoid it. I did, I, I'm kinda suicidal, I tried carbon monoxide once. It wasn't really working because my building has a big underground parking garage. <laughs> so it was taking a really long time. <laughs> I had to bring a stack of books and some snacks. <laughs> People come by and tap on the window and go, how's that suicide coming? <laughs> Pretty good, thanks. I felt drowsy earlier today. <laughs> One time I ran in a Chevette, tried to drive into a tree and kill myself. Only, as it turns out, you can't get up enough speed to do that in a Chevette. <laughs> My mom was very young when she had kids. I know when I was born, she was uh, three. <laughs> You'll never know the embarrassment of being dropped off at school in the Barbie dream car. I want to blame my mom, but I do, in fact, talk to a shrink every day. <laughs> I'll tell you something about talking to a shrink, too. You really can't pay someone to take an interest. <laughs> There's nothing worse than realizing that piece of paper your shrink is writing on is a crossword puzzle. <laughs> it was a dead giveaway. I told her something about my mom. She said, mm-hmm. And who played 99 on Get Smart? <laughs> 
So will Barbara Felden, why? Mm-hmm. And how do you feel about that? So I guess I'm kind of pissed. I'd always wanted Karen Valentine to have that one. You guys, here's an important and uh, a vital question, I think, for us. Has anybody, did you guys see, uh, anybody see Steel Magnolias? Yeah. All right, for those of you who saw Steel Magnolias, I have a question for you. What is Daryl Hannah doing in a film? <laughs> Does her dad own a studio or something? She is the worst piece of shit actress I have ever seen in my life. She, she's painfully, wretchedly, horribly bad. And people always say, no, she's pretty. Well, I agree that she's pretty. I think she's beautiful, but couldn't we just have a picture of her in the upper corner of the screen? Does she have to try to move and talk like that? Because I think those are the two problem areas for her would be the moving and the talking. <laughs> Without that, she's golden. It's horrible. Because she hasn't really played a human being that many times and think about it. <laughs> you know, what did she do? Well, Splash and Blade Runner and Clan of the Cave Bear. <laughs> so she's played a fish, a robot, and a missing link. I'm willing to bet you she was best in Clan of the Cave Bear. <laughs> I like driving Miss Daisy. Yeah. Did, you, did you like that? I like that. I thought it was kind of slow, but then again, they didn't say drive Miss Daisy really fast. <laughs> Not that you can take anybody else's word for a film anyways, you know what I mean? Not even a reviewer, really. Did you know when The Wizard of Oz first came out, it was badly reviewed? They, uh, they said it was stupid and unimaginative. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? What if it turns out Rambo 3 was really good? <laughs> and they show it every Easter. <laughs> I love Wizard of Oz. I have it on videotape and I watch it more frequently than they even show it on television. I, I have like the perfect attention span for videos, you know, for movies on videotape. I'm the only person I know who can watch Hoosiers over and over again and still have anxiety that they might lose the big game. <laughs> you know, I think it's amazing though, no matter what you see on television or in the movies, no matter what you see on television, for example, no matter how awful it is sometimes, someone wrote that down on a piece of paper. <laughs> it cost tons of money to make. This always amazed me, like, I don't know, even, uh, remember the old Snickers commercial? Where the, where the woman's brushing the horse and the guy interrupts her to ask her what, what time of day she enjoys a Snickers bar. <laughs> and she, she, she says, well, along about noon when your appetite's uh, poking at you, poking at you. <laughs> Someone wrote that down on a piece of paper. Probably a couple of times. <laughs> there was probably a first draft. We probably got the very best possible version of that. <laughs> that always amazes me. Many women auditioned for that role and were rejected and became bitter. <laughs> they were all in the casting office in the waiting room, all nervous with the script, trying to commit it to memory. <laughs> When your appetite's poking at you, poking at you. <laughs> Long about noon. When your appetite's <laughs> poking at you, poking at you. Probably a bunch of them just read it real flat, you know, not good at all. Just long about noon, when your appetite's poking at you, poking at you. And then that one gifted woman, <laughs> that fine actress, she had a vision. <laughs> My guess would be that she added the poking at you gesture on her own. <laughs> I just can't believe that was in a stage direction, typed up anywhere. Probably just came to her all of a sudden. 
chapter should probably read it right off the page. To learn about noon when your appetite's uh, poking at you, poking at you. <laughs> and their mouth is dropped open. You know. And then she made splash. <laughs> For another sip of beverage, <laughs> don't you? Kind of. Drinking there. What am I drinking? Diet Coke. Uh. I have to, cause I ate a box of Pop Tarts today. <laughs> I'm hoping this will take them away. <laughs> I have become such a disgusting lazy pig. I ain't well become. I didn't have that far to go, frankly, but. I stay in hotels all the time, you know, and I have room service. I, I'm too lazy to even walk down the hall and get the food myself. I have them bring it in on a tray, put it on a pillow as close to my face as I can get it. <laughs> Every so often I roll over and whatever food falls into my mouth, I chew on. <laughs> Did you say great life? Ooh, is it ever. <laughs> Boy, I'm in the fast lane, I'll tell you. I checked in a hotel the other day and the woman behind the counter said to me, do you have a floor preference? I go, yeah, I would like a floor. <laughs> Apparently they can just suspend you from the ceiling now. I go, well, no, 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 I would like a floor. And she got all impatient, she goes, no, what level? Oh, well, sorry. Obviously, I'm not that bright. How about uh, beginner? <laughs> I didn't know they could divide you up that way. <laughs> Apparently, that's so that in the event of a hotel fire, they can get the smart people out first. <laughs> While the stupid people are still upstairs collecting the little soaps and trying to get them hangers out the room. <laughs> I stay in hotels pretty much every week. My small shampoo collection is the envy of all who see it. Oh, I'm gonna get something out of this geeky job. I was in a hotel the other day and there was no shampoo in the room, you know? So I called down the front desk. I said, there's no shampoo in the room. They sent up a bell guy and he had his hands just full of lotions. He goes, oh, we're all out of shampoo. I said, can you see that no matter how many lotions you bring me? There's still not shampoo. <laughs> and it is, after all, two completely different functions. I went out that night, people were like, you know, your hair's kind of yucky. I go, yes, but feel my hands. <laughs> Soft, supple. <laughs> Ever so beautiful. <laughs> Sorry, I just noticed that your tie is kind of, part of your tie is like this and part of it's like that. Did you do that on purpose? Is it hot in here? Are you hot? Well, you could loosen your tie a little bit. Once you've already gone like that, you may as well loosen it for Christ's sakes. I'm wearing my tie kind of loose tonight because I wanted that Darren Stevens, I'm home, honey, look. <laughs> Do you live in a suburb of San Francisco? I live in the East Bay. You live in the East Bay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where exactly? Where in the East Bay do you live? In Berkeley. In Berkeley? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, what do you do for a living? I work in San Francisco in a law firm. You work in San Francisco at a law firm? I'll handle this, ma'am. <laughs> Have you had a bad lawyer experience? You could say that. You could say that? I mean, you could say that. I did say that. Very well, I might add. What, what bad law experience did you have? Somebody didn't take care of a personal injury. Somebody didn't take care of a personal injury? What, what personal injury? Like you were at a grocery store and you slipped or something? Actually, it was my mother. It was your mother? Yeah. Your mother hurt you? <laughs> and then you sued her? I didn't even realize you could do that. That's incredible. Like an idiot, I'd just been going to a shrink. See now that actually bringing legal action would feel better. 
No, somebody hurt your mother and then they didn't take care of the personal injury lawsuit? Right. Your mother was in, your mother was she injured fell in, and She fell in a gas station and Your mother was, fell in a gas station? And she was hurt very she badly. She pooped her own? <laughs> I don't, I've never liked self-serve, that's exactly why. <laughs> because so many people's mothers can be hurt there. <laughs> Is she okay now? She's okay. But she's okay, you mean not great? Right. What, you want her better than before? <laughs> What happened? She was in a gas station. What happened? She tripped and fell over a jack handle and it tore her face open on a lube rack. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> tore her face open on a lube rack? She's had two plastic surgeries and it's not fixed. Ma'am, bum everybody out. <laughs> I can't believe you're telling a story like that. Well, you could have just lied. <laughs> Jesus. I don't even feel like being here anymore. <laughs> Tore her face open on a new brack. <laughs> Ma'am, you could say she was in the bathroom and she was using that towel that turns around. And just sprained a wrist or something. <laughs> Tore her face open on a new brack. <laughs> if my mother tore her face open on a new brack, I sure as hell wouldn't go telling it to people like that. sign right there at the gas station, ma'am, right there that says that you're not allowed to be beyond a certain line, what, on account of the insurance? No, that's why we're suing them. That's why you're suing them? Because they didn't have that? Yeah. So your mom put her face real close to a loop rack? <laughs> ma'am, I don't think you have a leg to stand on. Where's the lawyer? You ever have one of these loop rack things out? I'm not sure that many of us can relate to this story, ma'am. A lot of us have had uncles that tore their face open on a loop rack, but not so much your mom. Is, is you ever handle that kind of thing? Oh, I'm not an attorney. <laughs> well, didn't he just tell us he was an attorney a little while ago? Oh, he insinuated. Oh, he worked? He did insinuate. Thank you, sir. <laughs> insinuation there. Boy, thank goodness you were here, sir. That insinuation nearly slipped by. What do you do with the law firm? I'm a lackey. You're a lackey? What does that mean? Go for a runner, that kind of thing? That kind of thing. So you don't even handle the Lubrack accidents? Why did your mom go to him for help? Ma'am, and completely masqueraded as a uh, Lubrack lawyer. I'm in a state of shock right now. And frankly, I'm so grossed out by the description of that. Ugh. One time I was uh, working in a nightclub and there was a guy right down here who was a, uh, he was a plastic surgeon and he said he had two kids. I thought, boy, that would make the daddy's got your nose game a little scarier, wouldn't it? <laughs> Kind of makes that loop rack thing not seem scary at all, huh? <laughs> I'm never even pumping my own gas again. I'm telling you, I'm not even sitting in the car when it goes through the car wash. <laughs> you guys, let's get out of here right now. Let's, I don't know, all of us so somewhere, 7-Eleven. <laughs> Act like it's a complete coincidence or just having a rush. We don't even know each other, we're just looking at some frozen foods. <laughs> and one at a time, each go up and buy a Slim Jim. <laughs> it would really screw up their inventory. <laughs> Next week on like Friday night, big old truck load of Slim Jims will be coming in. <laughs> we better get ready, they're in here last week. And you just got five dollars laying out on the table there? What's that, just to kind of taunt people? <laughs> you know, I thought people were specifically told not to leave here. And this woman, what was that woman's name that was sitting there? Kara. Kara? Kara. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, was, 
she probably wasn't even here when we talked about the Lubrac accident, and now she won't know to be careful of that sort of thing. <laughs> Do we have any college students here? Yeah? yeah? yeah. Uh, um, what college? San Francisco State. San Francisco State, right here in San Francisco? <laughs> I didn't even realize. What are you studying? Creative writing. Do you, do you have any idea what you want to do? I, I want to be a comedian. You want to be a comedian? <laughs> I want to write your jokes. Ma'am, can you see that I write my jokes? <laughs> I don't know, many of you are thinking right now, oh, what jokes? <laughs> That's really what you want to do is be a comic? No. 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 It was a second ago, but you've had a change of heart? <laughs> I'm so glad we talked you down from that one. <laughs> now, how old are you? Uh, 22. 22? Isn't that the cutest little thing you ever did here? <laughs> so you're not really sure what you want to do? Um, I, you know, I just want to be creative and have someone pay me for it. Just be creative and have someone pay you for it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I believe we have an opening in that. <laughs> well, Miss Simmons, you'll fit right in here. <laughs> well, actually, you know why you probably think you're not really sure because you're 22, but watch this. How many people here know what you want to do for a living? Isn't that remarkable? <laughs> That's why adults are always asking little, little kids what they want to be when they grow up. Because they're looking for ideas. <laughs> I don't know what I want to be. I don't really, I don't really know what I want to be. I, I, Kara, <laughs> uh, uh, and I assume that your last name is Come and Go as You Damn Well Please. Kara <laughs> Special. Um, Kara. <laughs> when you're at a gas station, do you know what to be careful of? you have. <laughs> Hope nothing happens to it. If it does, I believe I have an attorney for you. Oh, uh, nothing. How are your cats? My cat? One of them's dead, fine, bum me out. My cat Mowgli died last week. I didn't take him to, well, yeah, but you know, what are you gonna do, it's a cat. <laughs> I didn't take him to the vet right away, even though he was sick, cause um, I wanted to make sure he wasn't faking it. <laughs> Just trying to get out of his little cat responsibilities. <laughs> you know, it, it killed me. This cat had a tough life anyway. I'd only had him for a very short while before he fell off the mantle in the living room and broke his hip. Well, aren't they supposed to land on their feet? <laughs> is it now I have, three, I have three cats. Now, people think that you can't train cats. That's simply not true. My big cats are trained. Uh, they screw up a little bit here and there. They'll get up on the counters, for example, in the kitchen. But when I go into the kitchen, they have the courtesy to look frightened. <laughs> they get that look on their face like, no, no, I was just getting down. <laughs> Because wasn't it you who said just yesterday you didn't want me up here? <laughs> and so I was getting down. No, no, don't even come over. I'll do it myself. <laughs> but now, now, actually, my smallest cat, Haskell, she's kind of, she's not trained very well, basically. She's very proud of everything she does. It would never occur to her to get off the counters when I go in the kitchen. She thinks it's great. She climbs all the way to the top of the curtains right in front of me and just hangs there with this look on her face like, oh, look how high I am. <laughs> and she's kind of cute, really. You know, I don't have the heart to just knock her off. So instead, I just resent it. I'm just like, yes, it's very high. <laughs> Gave 
me an idea that made me wonder if that would work on a cop. You know what I mean? If when a cop pulls you over, you're just proud of the wrong thing. So he goes, you know, you're going 90, and you go, yeah, I was really flying, wasn't I? <laughs> Boy, I didn't think I could get her over 80, but whoo, yeah. <laughs> I could hardly see with that one headlight. <laughs> I was wondering, when a cop pulls you over, you know, if before he can come around the side of the car, what if you just pretend to be asleep? Maybe you'd just be like, let's not wake her. <laughs> she's such an angel when she's sleeping. <laughs> she must really be exhausted. <laughs> she was really going fast. Maybe you wouldn't even start up the bike right away. Just, I'll just push it for a minute. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, though. To train a cat, there's a good, uh, helpful thing. I sleep with a water pistol beside my bed now. You know? So if they screw up, if they're up like on the bookshelf or something, just... It does work too. The great thing is when you spray a cat with a water pistol, it has no idea where the water came from. <laughs> to her, she's just up on the bookshelf and all of a sudden, hey. <laughs> she thinks it's got something to do with books. One time I sprayed Mulga with a water pistol because he was playing in the Venetian blinds and he ran to me for protection. <laughs> I felt like such an asshole. <laughs> does work, because you know, water is very upsetting to a cat and it doesn't hurt them or mess up their fur or nothing. It's just very upsetting. <laughs> they don't know why. <laughs> such that when I take a shower, it's the most incredible thing my cats have ever seen. They all three line up right outside the show. I can hear them banging on the glass while I'm in there. Afterwards, I open the door, they're like, that was amazing. <laughs> Man, it was all over you. <laughs> and there was nothing we could do about it. That glass thing was there, we couldn't get in. You must have really messed up. I was born in Alabama, but I only lived there for a month before I'd already done everything there was to do. <laughs> Even as an infant, I was bored and crawled to the state line. <laughs> it was hard to decide back then. My parents said they had some packing to do. I said, fine, I'll meet you. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> you know, to be honest, I don't even know what Alabama borders. Georgia and... Uh, and Mississippi, what a fine choice. <laughs> Louisiana, I don't like. Hey! <laughs> I'll handle this. <laughs> Are you from Louisiana? Two of us. Two of you? Three of us. <laughs> and I'm a lawyer. So you, you do count just as slow as they suggest. <laughs> in Louisiana now? No. You, so you did move here? To learn to count. To learn to count? <laughs> Good thinking, Mom. Um, how long did you live in Louisiana? All my life. Well, not all your life, ma'am, because you're here now. Can you see that? <laughs> you had no way of knowing. That's why we go over this data. Louisiana, don't they have the, da that David Duke, the guy who's head of the KKK, and he's actually a legislator there? Isn't that an amazing thing? I know it. Sometimes I just want to go to the border of that state, jump up and down, hope it'll just crack off and slide into the ocean. <laughs> what? What? I don't know. People were mean to me there. I'd be driving down the street, not by, I mean, walking down the street, excuse me. I guess I walked so fast, I assumed I was driving. <laughs> I'd be walking down the street not bothering anybody at all, and guys go by in trucks and go, come on, baby. <laughs> Does this actually work for them? <laughs> I guess the women there carry like big metal chains with hooks on the end, just kind of snag them trucks as they go. But <laughs> well, you romantic scheme of you. 
You know where it's really a yucky state is Florida. Yes. Boy, that's a yucky state. It, oh, honest to God, it is. Everything about it's just yucky. I just don't like it. Even the way it hangs down like that, it's just yucky. I always wish a boat would hit it, it would skitter off in the ocean. I'm kidding, I like it okay there. Actually, Texas, I've kind of come to love, really. It's sort of a strange state, you know? Every time I go there, I buy another pair of cowboy boots, and I never even want them until I get there. It's sort of weird that way. Kind of just gets into you, you know? We flew over the state line, I developed an unnatural boot need. I went into a store that normally I would hate, had had big heads of animals up on the wall, usually I would hate that. This time I was like, let's shoot them again. <laughs> and the boots that I got, they're part lizard skin and part calf skin, so I hurt as many animals as I possibly could to get the footwear. <laughs> and then I said, do you have anything in kittens at all? <laughs> Maybe just like a slipper with a head right there. <laughs> point is that I'm not at all like that. <laughs> I love cats. <laughs> yeah, Florida is weird though. Every time I go there, every time I go there, by the time I get my suitcase from the airport to the hotel, there's a big old Florida bug on it. <laughs> they got some huge bugs down there too. I mean, big bugs, big old welcome to Florida sign. <laughs> I always have to get a little piece of toilet paper, smooch that bug and throw it in the toilet, you know? I think they should have like a toilet paper shortage from there where they've had to get a piece of toilet paper, smooch a bug, throw it in the toilet. I told that to the audience there, they said, use a brick. I said, well, that would clog your toilet. Anyways, I'm not dropping a brick on a Florida bug. Drop a brick in a Florida bug, and in a second, that brick will start to move. <laughs> and then the bug has a weapon. <laughs> you gotta lie to it. You gotta go, oh, it was an accident. I was building your house, and it slipped, I swear. <laughs> you know what, though? I get ants in my apartment here. I can't get rid of the ants. Do you guys have that? It is the weirdest thing, because I don't even keep food in my apartment. And every time I come here, I spray for ants. And when I leave again, I spray for ants. I can't figure out what they're doing in there. <laughs> to me, this is poor ant leadership. <laughs> You'd think the head ant would turn to the others and go, you know, fellas, <laughs> there's no food in there and many of us have been killed. <laughs> what do you say we go someplace else? I came back on New Year's, there was a virtual freeway of ants going into my medicine cabinet. I opened the medicine cabinet, they had found one throat lozenge. <laughs> An entire community of ants on one throat lozenge. Apparently they had had a little cough. <laughs> it's funny, because I did hear a noise, I just never knew what it was. <laughs> It'd be real late at night, I'd be trying to sleep right here. <laughs> what the hell is that? the annoying, nagging, hacking cough of an entire community of ants. <laughs> I learned something. I, 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 There's a very important medical thing that I learned earlier this year. I got sick for a little while, and I was, uh, I was unconscious, and when I came to, they asked what day it is. <laughs> That's how they tell if you're oriented or not. I don't know what day it is now. <laughs> it's kind of a trick question, really. Apparently, they used to ask who's the president of the United States, but they don't ask that anymore because it was bumming people out. <laughs> I, I was on an IV and everything. It was great. I'll tell you, it is hard as hell to get Pop-Tarts through those little tubes. <laughs> but it can be done if you work at it. I think election day, actually, when Bush was elected, was one of the most depressing days of my entire life, I think. I, uh, I mean, probably because I, I, I simply don't want him to be president. You know? But also because everybody else seemed okay with it. I, I was kind of lonely, really, that day, I think. I couldn't figure out how I'd gone so far afield from my fellow men. You know, I kept trying to figure out maybe there's something everyone else does that I don't do or something I do that no one else does that would set us apart like that. And you know what I think it is? I don't eat nuts at all. 
I've given this a good deal of thought. I firmly believe that there's something they're putting in nuts that will cause people to vote for Bush. Because not only do I not eat nuts, but they're always trying to get me to. I'll be on a plane and the stewardess goes by the little snack cart. I go, no nut for me, thank you. I fall asleep, I wake up again, there's a little foil pouch of nuts in my lap. <laughs> don't you think that's a little odd? <laughs> now, because I don't eat nuts, I always check a food pretty carefully before I bite in, you know? The other day I bought a brownie. I checked all four sides of the brownie. Not one nut showing on the exterior. I bit in, there they were, in the center, waiting to change my presidential opinion. <laughs> The other day I was eating at a pizza place, kind of one of these, I don't know, elaborate pizza places, had a menu for pizza. They had this big long list of junk you could have on, I mean like snow peas and goat cheese were on this menu. They actually, cheese and tomatoes were on the list, so I called the waitress over, I go, listen, I just want a normal pizza, if I could please. You know, I want mushrooms, cheese, and tomatoes. She brings the pizza over, I took a little bite, and there was walnuts in there. <laughs> I was pretty upset about it. I called her over, I go, there are walnuts in my pizza. And she goes, oh yes, we put walnuts in our pizza. I go, you mean to tell me I have to specifically ask for cheese and tomatoes, but walnuts come in a pizza automatically? And she said, yes, but I think if you have a little bite, you'll enjoy it. So I took a small bite and she said, don't you think Bush would make a good president? <laughs> How many people are kind of freaking out right now because you're remembering I did have a Snickers bar that day. <laughs> and there is a fist full of peanuts in every bite. It's just that my appetite was poking at me. <laughs> the way it was. Boy, you guys, I'm starting to fade. How are you feeling? Great. Are you? I think it's just about time for, um, for me to go home, I guess. No. Oh, a little late to suck up now. <laughs> now I have to um, fly to my dwelling tomorrow. You know? I was on a flight a while ago, and uh, while we were still on the ground, the flight attendant got on the PA and said, there's been a bomb scare. Everyone has to deplane. Which always kind of kills me. You know, we don't de bus, we don't de cab. <laughs> Why on earth would we deplane all of a sudden? Don't confuse this with vocabulary, right? In the middle of an emergency, for heaven's sakes. That's what they said. They said everyone has to deplane and they have to take the plane to a remote area and put dogs on it. I thought, what on earth could you possibly have done as a dog? Apparently, you don't go on the papers just once you get your furry little butt on a plane that might explode in a remote area. I thought that's kind of weird, though, that they just blurt it out like that, you know? <laughs> You'd think they go, um, hey, you guys, get off a minute, and then we have to tell you something, okay? <laughs> but boy, they were right. Nobody panicked or clamored for the exits or nothing like that. Everyone was just annoyed. They had the sense that if they had said, should we just risk it and go? And we go, yes, just go. <laughs> I would rather blow up than go to baggage claim. <laughs> Which is often my own feeling. The baggage claim part, I really do not like. One time I, I flew into Boston, they lost everyone's bags. And there was only one person working the baggage claim on the other end. I had to wait in line for an hour for one person to uh, describe what my bag looked like. And by the time I got up there, I was a little bit cranky, frankly. <laughs> I said, it's a big, huge, black bag. And she said the greatest baggage claim question possible. She goes, do you need it? Isn't that wonderful? She must have figured it was bound to work on at least one person. Somebody just become a Buddhist right then and renounce all material goods? Why no, I don't need it. Material things are wrong. Thank you for helping me grow. Could you shave my head now? Probably how they get all those religious nutcases in the airport to begin with. Probably just a nasty baggage claim incident of some sort. They could probably keep the flowers right there behind the podium. We've lost your bags, now go. Go, my children. Be fruitful and annoy. I actually 
you know, on the flights, I've truly come to resent the stewardesses when you go to get off the plane and they want to say goodbye. I feel, you know, here's some babe that's been rude to me for five, six hours straight. And now she wants to have a warm goodbye. I don't think so. I feel like, how about if you just take a swing at me and I trip you on my way down? Well, at least it's an honest exchange of some sort. I swear this is not an exaggeration. One time I was on a flight, somebody else apparently had my same seat. About the time we discovered that we had the same boarding passes, the stewardess came up behind me and she goes, what's the problem? <laughs> I said, well, we have the same seat. That's okay, I can just sit somewhere else. She said, well, I can't just have you wandering around the plane. And I thought, well, we're certainly of like minds on that since I had no intention of simply wandering around the plane. She said, I have to get you another boarding pass. Go to the back of the plane and wait for me. <laughs> well, because of her tone of voice, I naturally assumed I had done something hideously wrong, so I hung my head in shame and walked to the punishment area. <laughs> and boy, my butt is no sooner in a seat than they start on the PA with, thank you for flying with us, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for choosing us. I always feel like, you know, uh, Betsy. <laughs> This plane was going about where I needed to go, about the time I needed to get there, for about the amount of money I could afford. Frankly, I didn't even know you were gonna be on this flight. <laughs> Here's an important travel tip for you too. You know when you fly across the country and they bring you the hot towels? Do you know why the stewardess use tongs? <laughs> towels are hot. <laughs> it's a hideous trick, isn't it? Hot towel, yes. <laughs> Told you. When I get on the plane, all I want to do is sleep, too. You know, I, and now the pilot insists on talking for the entire flight. Have you noticed that, telling you the junk out the window? I don't want to know the junk out the window. I just want to sleep. And anyways, I don't think I've ever seen anything they pointed out ever, anyhow. They could tell me there's ocean and clouds out there. I'd be like, well, hell, I don't see it. And if the thing is on the left, then I'm on the right. And if I'm on the left, then the thing is on the right. If it's only on one side of the plane, then why tell everyone? <laughs> tell the people on the left, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> people on the left. <laughs> Don't tell the people on the right. <laughs> there is the coolest stuff out your window right now. <laughs> Don't all look at once. <laughs> people on the left. We hate the people on the right. <laughs> I'm purposely flying crooked right now <laughs> so that they can't see stuff. Look at them over there. Just sitting there. God, I hate them. They are ruining everything. You are the best people on this planet. You would have to put your trade tables up if you don't want to. If we go down, we're getting you up first. You guys have really been terrific. I thank you so much.